YouTube, this is Box Wave. Um, this might be a long video. Okay, I'm gonna break it up in three parts. Uh, first, I'm gonna talk about Adrian Broner's fight with Ashley Theophane, and then um, I'm gonna talk about Adrian Broner moving up to 147, and then I'm gonna talk about the whole Mayweather called out, the call out, and that potential fight and everything. So, might be a long video. I'm just letting you guys know. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. All right. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Um, Broner against Theophane, no surprise there. I I did a prediction video. You guys saw it. I thought it was going to go either two ways. Broner was going to win the fight either by destroying him or making it a competitive fight somewhat, um, depending on how seriously serious he was going to take the fight. All right, um, I did that video before the weigh-in. All right, the same day, but I did it before the weigh-in. Um, obviously, I didn't know he was going to come in overweight. Uh, he looked a bit soft. Okay, Broner doesn't look like he he either is not preparing for the fight like he should, or he's having trouble making 140, okay? Um, but I'll speak more on that later. But the fight, it, 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 as soon as the fight started, it was pretty clear to me that Theophane just shouldn't be in the ring with Adrian Broner, okay? He's just, Broner's in another class, and, you know, Theophane is a good fighter and everything, but he just really didn't have nothing for Broner, and even when he landed his shots and everything, and it just had no effect. He just didn't have the power to really hurt Broner in any way or affect Broner in any way, you know? Broner is a guy that takes rounds off, Okay, he his his punch volume is extremely low. All right, these are all things that I've already said. Um, I was I remember I, I don't know if it was the second or third round where I was watching and Broner was putting the pressure on him real hard, and um he had Ashley on the ropes and he slipped right right before that happened. That's the Broner that I would like to see. You know, I think Broner. I always say this, like Broner should become more of a pressure fighter, more of a volume puncher. I think he's a better fighter than fighting the pop shotting, one punch, no combinations being thrown fighter. You know, I mean, we all know he's a good counter puncher and he can still be a good counter puncher while bringing the pressure. I don't know why he chooses to fight that way. You know, he chooses to fight the way he's fighting. And even though he's had success, I think he would have definitely beat Sean Porter. if Because I, I think Broner's a better fighter, but I picked Sean Porter to win because Broner just does not punch enough. And when he's not completely, uh, what's the word? You know, I, I think, I don't think he was really motivated for this fight. You know, I thought this, you know, everything surrounding the, uh, the fight was was bigger than the fight itself, you know. The, the the whole the issues with him and his uh, you know, having a warrant or because he was wanted for the the robbery and the you know whole beef with Floyd Mayweather. I think all all of that was bigger than the fight itself, you know. And um, Ashley Theophane showed signs, you know. He came back at certain rounds. He won some rounds. Let's not act like he didn't win any rounds. He did win some rounds, okay? But, you know, whenever Broner landed, you saw the effect, you know? And it just is like, Theophane was obviously outworking Broner. It's not really that hard to do so. It's not really that hard to outwork Broner, you know? I still think that Ponce de Leon won the fight because he outworked Broner, you know? Uh, I thought he won that fight six rounds to four. You know, and if Broner doesn't knock you out, the fight, some of these fights are very close. Even a Paulie Malinaji fight was very, very close. So, you know, I, I, it was no shock to me that Ashley won a, a few rounds and, um, you know, outworked Broner at some, certain points. Uh, as, as far as the stoppage, uh, you know, listen, I, obviously the ref didn't see the low blow. Okay, he didn't see the low blow. It was a mistake that it was just an unfortunate mistake. Um, I don't think Ashley was winning at that point. Okay, he was getting hurt more and more. 
Uh, I don't think he had a chance of winning the fight. So I'm not really that mad at the stoppage. Okay. It's not like this is nowhere near uh, on a level as Tim Bradley and, and uh, you know, almost, you know, possibly getting stopped against Jesse Vargas. It's, it's not, it's not nearly on that level. Okay. Um, you know, we sit here debate about stoppages and premature stoppages all the time. It's nowhere even near on a level as Jacobs against Quillen. You know, that's another fight where people were like, oh, I should have stopped the fight. You know, Peter Quillen was badly hurt. So I'm not going to argue this stoppage. Just like I didn't really make the argument for that stoppage. You know, it's just like these guys were clearly losing the fight. You know, um, I think the Bradley Jesse Vargas is one where you got to say, like, damn, you know, Jesse really had Bradley hurt for real, you know? Um, and the ref made a bad mistake in that one, you know? Um, but anyway, uh, Ashley Theophane, he, he he did the best that he could. He just, he's just not on that level. And I believe, like, you know, pre people bring up uh, Danny Swift Garcia and their fight. Danny would knock him out if they were to fight today, okay? If they were to fight today, it would be a completely different fight. That fight is an older fight. Danny Garcia is much better than what he was when they first fought, or when Ashley Theophane fought uh, Danny Garcia. So, you know, Dan, it, it, the, Ashley's a good fight. He's just not on that level. He's just not on that level. Um, so, Broner says he might move up to 147. You know, he doesn't want to fight at 140 anymore. I mean, at this point, why fight at 140? You know, uh, you got stripped. You know, at the title, you don't have a title anymore, you know, and, you know, you got to keep cutting down, cutting, making weight. Um, this is my, this my whole thing on the whole move to 147. First of all, 147 is far more competitive, okay? If he's going to move up to 147, he got to understand that, you know, a lot of fights for him will be dangerous, especially with his low punching value. He's not going to be able to hurt guys like he... He did back in 135 and even at 140. You know, you go up to 147 and it's a whole different ball game. You know, he had to learn that with fighting Maidana and, and, and Sean Porter, even though that was at a catch weight. You know, you're going to be fighting bigger guys and more talented guys, guys that's fought other bigger fighters, bigger punchers. Adrian Broner is not really that much of a puncher at 147. All right. Um, and even though the fights that are, are not huge fights, like let's say, let's look at some of the track record of some of the fighters that a lot of guys at 147 usually fight as gatekeepers. Like uh, Guerrero is one of those guys that a lot of people want to fight. And that would be a close fight if he were to fight Robert Guerrero, you know? And there's some bad blood there because these guys were going to fight back when Broner was back at 135, and that's a that's a damn neat, that's a competitive fight. You know, that's a very competitive fight. If Broner thinks that, and that's the easier fight compared to some of the other fights at 147. If he were to fight a Guerrero, you know, um, if he were to fight a Berto, or e even if he were to fight uh, a Louis Colazzo, you know. These are fights that he can win, but they're not easier fights. You know, this is not Ashley Theophane. This is not uh, Khabib, Alec Verdiev, and uh, Carlos Molina, and Manuel Taylor. All good fighters, but this is another level, you know. And when you go up to 147 and you're, you're, you're taking, uh, you know, stay busier fights, they're not easier up there, you know. And then, then when you go and start fighting the top guys in the division, whether it's Kel Brook, whether it's Thurman, Porter, Amir Khan, you know, well, depending on what whatever happens with Amir Khan, um, Bradley, Pacquiao, you know, Danny Garcia, these are all fights that, Errol Spence, these are all fights that I don't see Broner winning with his low punch value. I just don't see him winning these fights. And I hope he's just not moving to 147 because he doesn't want to make the weight at 140. You know, like when Maidana was talking about coming back at 154. Are you coming back to 154 because you just too lazy to make 147? 
you know? You know, and my Don is a big puncher and everything, but at 154, he's not the he's not gonna be the guy that he was at 147 and 140. You know, he's not, you know, you fighting bigger guys. You fighting guys at 154 that should be fighting at 160. You know, a lot of those guys at 154 should be fighting at 160 easily. So I just feel like Broner, if he's going to go up to 147, don't do it because you're too lazy to make 140. Because um, at the weigh-in against Alec Verdiev, he looked good. You know, he looked good. He looked, uh, and, and, uh, and Porter, he looked, well, that was at a catch weight, but he looked good making those weights. Like, he seemed motivated for those fights. Whereas this fight here, he just didn't seem motivated. He knew it was easy work. He knew he was going to win regardless, you know? And even right after the weigh-in, when um, I did my video before the weigh-in, but I, I seen the reaction to people in the weigh-in. They thought that they, they might have been upset because Broner didn't look good at the weigh-in. He didn't look fat, but he didn't look as... He, he he didn't look as as good as he normally did in other fights. So I hope he's not doing it just because he's being lazy, you know, because if he thinks it's going to be easier for him now not cutting the weight, he got to worry about the stiffer competition up at 147, all right? Now, uh, Floyd Mayweather thing. <sighs> I so much I want to talk about here. You know, I... I I really think Floyd never really liked Broner, you know, and, and and I thought that last year when they had that beef and Broner made a reaction video when he was in the car, I can't remember everything that Floyd said, but it seems like whenever Floyd says something about Broner in a negative light, he goes hard, you know, like he, you know, I, I think there's a side of it. That is a business side of it where the back and forth they've been having was to help promote this fight here. But I remember when they finally ran into each other at the basketball game, the Watson basketball game, and they showed each other, you know, finally. Floyd looked very uncomfortable. I think they both looked very uncomfortable, but AB came in with he. He came in with a, a jersey and crossed out the TMT and had AB on it. And I think Floyd and Brona, they showed them together. And, you know, they were talking about going out. And Floyd just looked very uncomfortable. Like, Floyd, I don't think Floyd ever really liked Brona, you know. And he doesn't have to like him, you know. But I think people wanted to see them together because Brona looked up to Floyd so bad that I think Floyd kind of embraced them, but it was a little bit forced. And whenever, like, I heard the interview with Floyd a couple of days before the fight, and Floyd really went hard at him, you know? He went really, really hard. And I was surprised because Floyd has seemed a bit more on the mature side over the years. Yet, this interviews like that where he shows signs where He's still a little immature, you know, and he could say whatever he wants, you know, because AB was definitely talking about him. But AP, AB is being emotional, you know. Adrian Brona really looks up to Floyd. You can tell that Brona is really hurt when Floyd ain't embracing him like that, like he should, you know, like he wants him to. You know, and it's no, it's no, it's, 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 it's very clear that A.B. wants to be like Floyd. Like, he's mimicked, even his fighting style. I think Broner punches, the volume punching and everything is so low because he wants to fight exactly like Floyd. Like, you know, I, I, I really believe that. Like, I, I know I could be wrong, and I'm not saying that. Nobody fights that style, but I believe that Broner mimics Floyd Mayweather because it's Floyd Mayweather. I think he fights that like Floyd Mayweather because it's Floyd Mayweather, you know, more than as a strategic way of fighting. You know, I, I think that's just my personal opinion. I think he look like he idolizes Floyd Mayweather like he does. 
And Floyd Mayweather don't look at him like a real little bro. You know, and Broner is just now starting to realize that, you know. He's just now realizing it, you know. Everybody around him realizes it. You know, for him, to hear Broner talk about where he's come from, you know, talking about, you know, eating cereal with water and everything. You know, we all heard that same story. But unfortunately for Broner, he he needs guidance. And guys that make this amount of money this at this rate, and they don't really have the guidance. It it, it could become it, it it could turn into a disaster. All right, and I'm only saying this because I actually really like Broner. I, I I just wish you know the whole thing with Walmart and him throwing up the change in the air. I was just like, damn man, this kid really needs guidance. Like he he really does, you know, because he's not that rich, you know. And Broner and, and, and Floyd was saying that and. Like, Floyd shouldn't be the guy to say that. Not in, at least not in that manner, you know? I think Broner, you know, Floyd could do whatever he wants, man. But I think if Floyd really wanted to, Floyd should have took this guy. I, 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 this is my personal feelings. I wish Floyd really took this kid under his wing, okay? Um, I just don't like the direction... Adrian Broner's career is going, you know, he's not that rich and, you know, he has a lot of kids. He just had another baby, you know, and, you know, what is that? Eight kids now with like six baby moms. And then when he talks about it in the interviews, cause I watch his videos, I watch his interviews, you know, I see his interviews on Vlad and, you know, he talks about his baby mom and he's like, you know, you know, I call her my wife, but I, I don't really want to get married to her and all that. And, uh, you know, and he had, he talked about another baby mother he had where he screwed that up. And, and I know I'm getting off topic guys. I apologize, but I, I, I feel like I got to say all this. This is how I really feel about the whole fight and their relationship, him and Floyd. And I feel like, you know, you have all these kids with different women later when the money's not coming in, like the way it is right now. It's going to hurt you, especially if you're paying child support. It's going to hurt you. And we see all these guys that made much more money than Broner. You know, Mike Tyson, uh, Vin Baker. You guys know if you're, you know, if you don't know who Vin Baker is, look him up. You know, look up Sean Kemp. Look up all these other athletes that made way more money than Adrian Broner. You know, we talking about in the hundred millions and they went broke, you know, and, you know, they... A lot of guys, a lot of these guys that went broke, it's, a lot of it has to do with child support, too. They're having a bunch of kids all over the place. And, you know, Bruno's not nearly that rich. You know, he's barely cracking the millions. You know, he's barely cracking that. And I wish Floyd took him under his, his wing. And it kind of bothers me to hear Floyd bash him the way that he do. You know, because... The guy, and I know Broner has a father, but he clearly doesn't look at his father in the same light as he looked at Floyd Mayweather. And I know it's not Floyd's job to take him in, but this guy really idolizes you. You know, like, if you were to be, you, you are the only person that I think can really change this kid's life, you know, and... I wish Floyd did it. You know, I would have done it. I've done it with other people. You know, I've done it with, you know, I've I've been, I've influenced a lot of people, you know, in my personal life. And I'll do it if I feel like it's, it's necessary, you know, if I have that kind of relationship with that person. Obviously, Floyd does it. And Floyd bashes him and he goes hard and it's like, damn, like, I don't know. It's tough, tough. Um, so anyway, about these two, um, I can tell you the first reaction that I've seen from people on social media. I think 
it's a good reaction of them possibly fighting. You know, I think people would want to see that fight. Uh, more so than the Danny Garcia fight, you know. Um, the Triple G thing, I don't think that would ever really happen. And I don't think people really believe that it would happen. Um, the Danny Garcia thing, a, a lot of people just don't think Danny is that good. A lot of people just think he's overrated. And they think that it would be an easy fight for Floyd. Very few people think that Danny has a shot at winning the fight. But Adrian Broner, for some reason, people want to see that fight. Okay? I think people's been wanting to see that fight because of the, the similarities and the way that they fight. And that Broner, you know, and the similarities in their personality too. You know, because they're still similar. Even this day, even with an older Floyd, they're still very similar. And... I just think the first reaction is that people want to see this fight. People want to see this fight. Regardless if Adrian Broner's deserved it or lost a couple fights or he's not ranked up there or whatever. I don't know. You know, I'm not really talking about the technicality technicalities or anything like that. But I'm just saying on first hand, people want to see this fight. The reaction is bigger than some of the other names that came up. Uh you know, since Floyd has retired, okay? Um, so anyway, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, they should fight. Why not? You know, if Floyd comes back for his 50th fight and fight Broner, I wouldn't be mad at that, you know? Um, the one fight I still would want to see more is if Tim Bradley is to beat Manny Pacquiao. I would still love to see Floyd fight Tim Bradley if he is to beat Pacquiao. Um, I don't think it would happen, but, you know, we'll see, you know. Anyway, um, I think I covered most areas. I probably forgot a few things, but, you know, I think uh, as far as Floyd and Broner, I don't know. You know, I just wish it, it went a different way because I, I think... I just don't like the direction in Adrian Broner and, and, and where he's going. And I think if he had someone like Floyd in his life that really tried to lead him to the right direction, I think he would be more well off, you know, down the line. Um, but Floyd chooses to tear him down every give him, give, given out opportunity. And that just proves that it, it, it never was really genuine from the beginning. You know, I don't think Floyd ever really, really liked this guy, you know. And he tries to distance himself whenever, you know, something does happen with Broner. And it's pretty cut and clear, you know. Every, it's pretty obvious, man. So anyway, uh, that's that concludes my video. You know, I'm, I'm cool with the fight. You know, I'm cool with the call out and everything. Uh, Robert Easter Jr. and Mendez, you know, it's crazy because I didn't even know that they were fighting until maybe a couple of days before the fight, maybe a couple of days before the weigh-in. And uh, that was easily the best matchup of the night, you know, as far as, uh, you know, two competitive fighters. Easter did good. Easter destroyed them, obviously. But, um, oh, freaking bug. Um, yeah, uh, that was a great, that's a great performance by Robert Easter. You know, um, you definitely be on the lookout for him because he's been around for a while now. I think he, I think the first time I seen him back in New York a few years ago under the, um, he was fighting on, uh, 42nd Street, I believe, on the Broadway Boxing, um, a few years ago. But anyway, um, uh, yo, make sure you guys subscribe and, um. Uh, See you on the next video.